Thank you so much for tuning in to Warriors for Jesus Ministry and for tuning in Facebook Live. We have to apologize because we had just did a teaching and the recording was not on. The recording button was not on and I'm sure you couldn't hear the sound. You probably heard the introduction music playing, but you didn't hear the sound. So we're recording again. We deleted that one and we want to go right back into talking about end times. Prophecy Report is what we're talking about today. And again, we thank you so much for tuning in Facebook Live. And we hope that you will be blessed and that you will have some insight and understanding to how indeed important it is to understand end times prophecy while we do end times prophecy. report. We want to start with the scripture in Revelation chapter number 9, verse number 20. And it says, And the rest of the men which were not killed by the plague, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Now that's saying to us that people worship idols. They worship objects. They believe in them. They use them to help get answers, so they think and all various different reasons. And that has always been the case throughout the ages, and it's even more prevalent today. But we want to look at also Revelations 9 and 21, because there are four big sins in Revelations 9 and 21. And it says, neither repented they of their murders. That's the first one. And this is talking about what's going to happen in tribulation time. It was just going to happen once the church is gone and once God releases his judgment on the world. And things are just going to go from worse to worse to worse. And eventually God's going to end it. And it's going to be a victorious moment. And it's going to be a whole new world. But the fulfillment of prophecy has to take place. And we are living in a time where it's moving faster than ever before. Don't you see when you put on the news how things are accelerating and killings, and abortions, in crimes. And so all the way when the church is gone, when many of us are gone, this world is going to be so wicked. People are not going to have no regret for what they do or no sorrow for what they do. Their hearts are going to be cruel and cold. So they repent not of their murderers or their sorcerers, nor their fornication. And we see that building up right now. America and the world globally is pushing um, all kind of ungodly behaviors, men with men and women with women. Rather, it's fornication with another man or with another woman or with someone that's not your wife or with yourself. It's accelerating. Nor are there thefts. Look at the news. The movement was last year. It was critical race theory. It was how blacks was being killed by the police. Now we see a movement of theft going on, going in stores, taking all the brand name purses and items. But it's going to get worse. And I know that sounds so negative, but prophecy is not negative. It's positive. It's showing you how things are falling into place. And it's trying to, God's trying to awaken us. His people, first of all, to realize the urgency of pulling people out of darkness and teaching and exposing the works of darkness. So these are the big four sins that we read about in Revelation 9 and 21. Murderer, fornication, theft. The list of the four most prominent sins of the tribulation period. And if you look at my Revelation series that we teach on Sundays at 7 a.m., I believe we in um, lesson, number, lesson number two, you can follow along and learn a whole lot of what we're talking about in this brief teaching through following us in our Revelation series. So the significance of these sins is so great in light of present trends in the world today. It's no coincidence that the four major sins listed here are what they are. Today, for the most serious problems facing law enforcement are these four sins, murder, fornication, theft. But we want to focus on they repented not of their sorceries, of their sorceries. And that is a movement today that is rampant. The Bible warns of end time sorcery repeatedly and not just any sorcery, but a very specific kind of sorcery shall be dominant in the end times. In Revelation 9 and 21, the word translated for sorcery is the Greek word, which is pharmacon. Farm, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. 
It is another form of the Greek word, which is used in Galatians 5 and 20, pharmakia. You can read Galatians 5 and 20 and, and, and check that out. And which is translated, and when you read Galatians 5 and 20, it's translated as witchcraft, sorcery, drugs, pharmakia, pharmacy, witchcraft. And it brings about spirits. 1 Timothy 4 and 1 say, now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last time, some will, will turn away from the truth, from the true faith. James James say, many will depart from the faith. They will follow deceptive spirits, deceiving spirits, and teachers that come from demons, doctrines of demons. It's happening. Now, let's look at this end time prophecies report as we talk about the sources, which is the occult. We need to know the truth behind that word. It means hidden secret and mysterious, particularly pertaining to the supernatural. Things that you can't even understand that you are encountering because of what you are practicing and what you are believing in and what you are attaching yourself, the soul ties you to in. You can't see what's really happening in your spirit, in your nightmares, in your behaviors, because it's a supernatural thing that the Lord wants to reveal to you how to be delivered. And the enemy wants to keep you bound and look at it as fun and excitement and power. But it's deception. The ex uh, examples of occult practice, the astrology world. I remember when I used to study astrology before I became a believer 43 years ago. And you know, I don't even want to say what my sign is in the month of March, but I used to read it every day. And it seemed like what it said about that day really happened that day. The enemy has a way of deceit. He has power. He can do some things because God allows it, but God wants you to see that his power is greater. Healing power of witchcraft. Wicca is the movement of today. Tarot cards, people are tapping into psychics. And I'm here to tell you that some of your children are pulling up in these things, are connecting with these with the spirit world. Ouija boards craziness. The occult and the truth behind it is mysticism. It's spiritism. And that's what the enemy tried to tell Eve. You won't surely die. You will be as God knowing good and evil. But they didn't understand the spiritism to it. They didn't understand the doors that it opened. Sin. And now we have the pandemic of sin. But in the midst of the pandemic of sin, we have the pandemic of deception. But in the midst of it all, we serve a God and you can serve a God. You can serve the one and only true and living God, not a God. The one and only true God of absolute truth. You can learn how to serve him and be delivered from this age of deception. Read the first century church in the book of Acts, how the command was given to them how to be born again and how to receive God's promises and believe it and receive it. So the occult is Satanism. All, and all forms of false religions will become the norm as demons lead people into more wicked and vicious behaviors. And it's happening in the music. It's happening in the video games. It's happening in the virtual world. And it's getting worse and worse. And it is our job to expose the enemy. It is our job. You know, this ministry that God has given me that you see me presenting to you takes a lot of intercessory prayer. And we prayed even before we got on here. That's why we didn't pray as we opened on here. Because we want those of you that are interceded to remember us in prayer. Remember Warriors for Jesus ministry. Because we are going to obey the mandate that God has given us. And I am looking for a platform and I'm waiting on God because he told me he know how and he know when. I'm looking for a platform, a door for God to open where I can visually assemble not just young people together. But souls is, you know, as a whole and teach them how to understand the time through the biblical absolute truths of God, through being relevant with this culture and the church age of deception that we are living in because people are looking for deliverance. So this false religion will bring about violent crimes. This demonic agenda will bring about uh, like murder will be absolutely rampant without any sense of morality. People are functioning. And what we mean by that is no standard. The spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard. 
Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach, it's a shame, it's an embarrassment unto any people. And we have a standard of absolutes that God wants to present to you, and it's called holiness. It's called sanctification. It's called salvation. It's called deliverance. And it happens through confessing and repenting and believing and obeying the word of God. So no decency with this word morality, no honor for God, no honor for his people. Wicca is the movement of today. Spell chanting. You hear that all in the yoga. People chanting and don't even know what they're chanting to. But this movement called Wicca, it's called white magic. It's supposed to war against black magic. It's supposed to war against evil spirits, but yet it's not God's spirit. And it's not God's will. And it's not God's way. Wicca is among the fastest growing religion in the country. Almost half a million people practice it in the United States. I'm here to warn you parents, with your older college students in your house, with your preschool students in your house, children in your house, your, your, your middle school children in your house, your grandchildren, whatever the case might be, church folks, I'm here to tell you, you got a lot of young people and a lot of older people that are practicing spiritism from this approach and don't even know it. Because it's masked in a whole lot of different ways. And we're going to try to reveal a little bit of that today. We're going to come back with this teaching again tomorrow morning so that we won't overexert you with a lot of information. We want you to digest it and be interested to learn the revelation that God has given us to be commanded to give to you. So a book titled Teen Witch, uh, Wicca for New Generation, sold more copies for its, for, for its publishers than any other book in 95 year, in, in book in its 95 year history. Websites devoted to Wicca have been cited as the most visited religious website on the internet. I know some of you listening can relate to what I'm teaching. And I know some of you listening say, ah, pay attention to your children. Pay attention to what's in there. Watch and see if they got crystals laying in, 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 in the, on their bed or crystals laying on their desk or sage or powder or sage or, or, or strange little emblem necklaces and things. I have a teaching on signs and symbols that can show you all of the signs and symbols and what they represent. Rather you wear it and say it don't represent that the origin of that spiritualism, the origin of that religion, the origin of that belief, it was created for that and that only. You cannot redefine what God did not create for his glory and give it a definition different from what it originally means because the people that practice these deceptive religions and practice these spirits, when they see you with it on, and when they see you behaving like it, and when they see you, they hear you chanting and doing um, different ums and all these variations of things that we do in the Western world and don't even understand what you're connecting with, they know. So all of these different tools are, are, are prominent in the Western world now, and they're creeping into houses, and they're creeping into colleges, and they're creeping into universities. But Isaiah 5 and 20 say, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that take darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Everything is in a reverse state now. What seems good to you might not be good to me. What's evil to you might not. It's always been that day, that way, but it's laws being passed where you can be uh, restricted and where you can be sued and where you can be, you got to tolerate it else you're going to lose benefits and privileges. Because it's a different type of world. End times. Prophecy report is what we're giving you today. Most Wiccans follow a nature-oriented belief. They follow a nature-oriented belief system that is polytheistic, believing in many gods. Like Hinduism, believing over three million gods. So this New Age witchcraft and many goddesses. And this is why you have to pay attention to people like Black Lives Matter. The founders of that, they will tell you what they represent. The feminist movement. I love women. I have no problem with women leaders. But it's the way you lead. It's a feminist movement. The goddesses and women now are seeking for power. They're seeking how to be able to control. And this witchcraft here will teach you how to get a man, teach you how to get a husband, teach you how to get wealth. 
but it's presented and it's unwrapped all kind of way. It's built around the worship of the great mother. God is like the Catholic Church worship Mother Mary. They don't even have it in their Bible. You shouldn't even worship idols. But this mother goddess, see, just like the Halloween, the Druids and all of those over in Ireland and all those different places over there, they're, they're, con they're practicing what they believe with Mother Earth and the goddesses and the energy within and the sun god, like the Babylonian principles, still in existence now in the Western world, now coming into the church. And these are the type of people that actually work in the White House. They, they work in darkness. They work in the music. They work in the songs. They indoctrinate. They teach. They create a spirit world for people to go out and commit these crimes and these spirits that we name in Revelation 9 and 21. It creates them with a spirit of murder, a spirit of fornication, a spirit of death, and a spirit of sorceries. And it's going to get worse. Once we're out of here as a church, this world God is going to allow all evil to be released. And then he's going to wipe it out and start all over again. So they worship the plants and the rocks and the planets and all these things they say have spirits so they can be worshipped. This movie, Avatar, I looked at it years ago. I wasn't aware. I thought it was a pretty touching movie. But when I really began to pray and really began to look at it, it has a message of sorcery and a message of spirits. And it's called, when you look up the word avatar, it says Hinduism. Look it up. It's a manifestation of deity or released soul in body form on earth and incarnate divine teachers. You're releasing spirits. The enemy has a whole blueprint of how to present his seducing spirits and doctrines and demons to us. J.K. Rowlands and Harry Potter. I was a youth pastor for about 27 years, and I used to teach on this 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 first book when it first came out, Chronicles of Narnia, um, Pokemon. I was called Harry Potter Pokemon preacher teacher. But it wasn't even about just that. I was dealing with the whole overall of what I'm dealing with right now, but it wasn't accepted because now it's seen and people are wondering what's going on. And if you keep watching the teaching that we put out, and if you pay attention to our Revelation series that we do every Sunday at 7 a.m., you will get some direction and some answers on what to do and how to prepare and how to trust God, because none of what's happening is to defeat anybody that wants to be victorious through the power of God and through the truth of God's word and receiving God's spirit. Read Acts chapter number one. I always say chapter number 19, the first century church, because that's when the church started. And it started the way Jesus commanded for it to start and the apostles did. And do it that way. Get baptized that way. Receive the spirit that way. And God can begin to work with your life if you submit to his will and find you a, a leader teaching sound biblical truth. So this Harry Potter movement is accelerated like never before and it seems like it's not even ending. And J.K. Rowling is definitely a practicing sorcery witch. And Harry Potter, look at it's science and it's magic, a magical natural science. I looked up the school of Hogwarts, and when I looked it up, I looked, noticed over in London they actually have a school for children ages 11 to 18 to teach them sorcery. And these people, these kids, and this music, and this hip hop, and all this culture that we see, it's spirits involved in that, it's sorcery involved in that. Even Earth, Wind, and Fire, they had a message in their music that people didn't even know. They wasn't worshiping, uh, uh, they was dealing with spirit world. They, this is a worship of water, fire, air, and earth. That's why you hear the green plant and you hear all of this, this nature and mother earth and trying to get rid of gas and get electric car. It's all about worshiping the creature more than the creator. It's all about worshiping idols and images and things more than God. So the new age fills with deceiving spirits. It wants you to empty your mind of your thoughts and acquire peace. But Christianity, I like to say sanctification, holiness, fills you with the Holy Spirit, fills your mind with the word of God to acquire peace. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. And he, he, he gives you his spirit and he gives you direction according to his word. So it is our job. 
Obey Ephesians 5 and 11. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. The King James say, reprove them, expose them. We are to expose the works of darkness, not conceal them. So what we're doing today is not just trying to give you information in an uh, uh, end-time prophecy report, but give you revelation so that you can understand what to look for and what to pray for and what to avoid and what to get out of and why you need to get out of it. The path to Christian wit, Christian wicker. This is a Catholic lady that has taken the Bible and, and put it in with, with, Christ, with witchcraft, white magic, good magic, so they say. And wicker, Christian wicker, God and goddesses. These are books that are, people are ta have tapped into. In preparation for the end times, this demonic power is being normalized and harnessed away across the land. The normalization of demonic power has been an ongoing project for centuries. We want to stop right there, and we're going to pick this back up next week. We ask that you would tune in, and tomorrow we'll be back Facebook Live. Amen.